everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really pretty Easter card in the shape of an Easter egg. It's a shaker card, so all the bits inside there move around, really sparkly, really pretty. It's got a nice little tag there and I've just heat embossed the Easter greetings and then you've got all these bows on this kind of glitter lattice effect. It's so pretty, it really is lovely and then inside you've got loads of room to write your message. I've just cut a straight edge there just so the card you can land it so it just doesn't roll so it stands up nicely there and it's just I loved it really really enjoyed this one it will fit in a 5 by 7 envelope so it's a good size and it's very easy to make so let me show you how. Okay so the die set I'm using is the brand new um, collection it's the oval box collection and this is the extravagant egg die set. I did share these in detail on one of my what did I get videos and I'll link that up here because some of you might want to see all the other bits but it's lovely and it's not until you start die cutting these things that you really see all the detail and stuff because when I was talking about it I said about the lattice and this lovely, this is like a bead trim I don't know if I actually really showed that but there, can you see it all around the outside it's just those little touches are just brilliant so the, I've gone ahead and cut everything that I need because it's just a lot of die cutting so I'll just talk you through what I've cut just so that you, you know, you can see what I've done so I've got a 5x7 card blank okay, so this was 5x7 and you can see the side of it still there and you just get the largest of the dies the oval pop it on your card blank let me just grab another one actually show you with this one here it's a bit easier but you just sit the shape over the top and then you want to overhang a little bit of the die on the left hand side here over that fold so you can see there part of the die just overhanging that means that it will not cut that small section so it will leave that attached and that's what you'll have so you want to run it through I'm just using 300 GSM white card and now I've got my card blank then I went ahead and cut using this is the Centura Pearl I think it's the lavender again using that large one and that will now go on the top so it would just cover that slight flat side there and um, just make it look a little bit more prettier I use that lovely real kind of um, very light pink colour there. This is yeah more of that lavender. And we're then using these two here. So this is the lattice, which will just cut in the detail. But to get the this you know that whole piece, you want to cut it with the frame as well. So I just lined those up with a bit of washi tape, ran it through my dye machine. Make sure you get a nice even border there, and you will have this really lovely piece. And you'll see it's got all little kind of like circles running all the way through there really lovely and I've gone ahead now what I would say is whenever you make a shaker card your decoration that you're going to stick on top of the acetate if you're doing it that way I would say to stick on some double sided sticky sheet first and then run it through your dye machine but I'm out I was out last time I'd done a shaker card and I've now ordered some because I always forget it's not sometimes until I start making the card and then I'm like oh so I just popped some red tape on the areas where I wanted it to stick and all around there but if you've got some double sided sticky sheet on it you can just peel the whole thing off and it's a big sticker. Then I also went ahead and die cut just the outer size with some acetate. I've got a few bits on mine, I'll give that a wipe in a moment. Um, because that is going to back that piece there for our shaker window. And then I also went ahead and cut, die cut, all of the bows. So I ran that through my die machine, you need to do it, uh, there's 20, I think there was 20 on here, One, two, three. Yeah, 20 on there. So you just run that through four times and that will give you all of those. And then that was it. You've got lots of other bits there. I'm going to be using this again for more of my Easter series that I do because I want to do the one where you paper piece all of the diamonds here and then you've got these layers here. So you've got them there and you've also got the smaller ones there as well. And I'd like to, you know, play around with that like plaque detail as well so I've got more ideas but um, I just thought I'd share this one with you first so I'm just going to get rid of my scoreboard there because you don't actually need the scoreboard I just always put everything on it ready for my videos okay so first of all I'm just going to grab some of my glue and you just want to stick down your you know your top kind of mat the one that's going to cover the card blank I'm just going to stick that over there it's really easy to you know get lined up because you can just follow the the shape there it's a really nice size again I love five by seven I know lots of you commented saying that you you like larger cards as well so and this kind of card I mean just looks 
beautiful. It's just got such a nice look to it. Then you will have, if you've done what I've done, then you just want to take all of the release paper off. All right, so that's there, and then all these bits. And then if you're using a double-sided sticky sheet, just again, take the backing off. And um, you want to stick that onto your acetate. Okay, so that's now all stuck down, and we've got a nice window now to hold all those sequins in. Okay, so next we want to create a little wall, like a barrier to keep all the sequins in place. So what I always like to do is, when you want something very thin, so we want some foam tape that's going to be, you know, that we can hide behind this frame here. So you'll see there inside there's just this white foam. And to do that, I just use, this is just the 99p stuff, I get it from the pound shop. I don't, I've never ever paid out for expensive foam tapes. This stuff's so sticky, it sticks to my nails, everything. And I've never had cards fall apart. I've got some cards in my stash that have been there for well over a year and they are fine, they don't come apart. So for anybody that's always a little bit, you know, dubious about whether to buy some of the cheaper stuff, yeah, not everything's great, but I've never had any problems and I make a ton of cards so and I've never had anybody say they fall apart but what I do is I just run it on some grease proof paper okay or some wax paper um, I think wax paper works I'm sure it does and um, you can then cut it any you know width that you want and it also means you won't dirty your scissors. In fact, I've not long cleaned them, so I'm not gonna use those, even though it's okay. I'm just gonna use some older ones. But I've got this piece here, which actually I'm probably gonna do, this was from the other card that I done. So I'm just gonna cut that in half again, and then I'll use those two. But it just, it's brilliant. You don't have to go out and buy the thinner foam tapes, because they can be quite pricey as well. Um, and this way, you know, you can do it yourself. So now I've got a very thin strip of foam tape and I can just peel off the greaseproof paper on the back there and it's all nice and sticky. So I'm just going to grab this one here and just stick it around. And I show this technique in my shaker card. I've got done I've done loads of shaker cards, but I've got a really good playlist and on there is one where I really go into detail with them, so I give you lots of kind of hints and tips. And um, if you check that out, if shaker cards is something that you would like to do or maybe something you've struggled with in the past, check that out because a lot of people have said it's helped them. It's quite a popular video, so um, I'll link it up here. But you can see here I'm just pulling this release paper underneath as I'm just working the foam around the frame. And don't worry if the release paper on top all like buckles and stuff, it will all come off, you know, perfect at the end. So just take that last bit of the backing off. Might need a little bit more, yeah, it's always the way, isn't it? Just that tiny bit extra. Make sure you butt your foam right up to the other one. You don't want any bits getting out. And then just get it to join where it meets the other one and just cut that away like so. Okay, so now you've got that piece all ready. So next I'm gonna take off the backing. Okay, next you want to add all your sequins onto your card base, so I'm not going to go too mad this time. Usually I put quite a few in, but I think, well, maybe I'll just put a few more. <laughs> See, this is the thing, I'm always like, oh, shall I? And then I take some off again. That should be fine. This is a little mix I made up myself. When I get to the bottoms of, like, um, some of my sequin packs, I just mix them together. So I've got white, pearly colour, and this nice, like, iridescent sequin, so... Just put them in the middle there, and you're going to stick this over, and you're going to have a nice border. So make sure you've got nothing in there that you don't want. And then just sit that down. Like so. And really make sure all that foam is nice and secure. And now, all your sequins move around. Looks so pretty, love it. Then I've got the bead trim, so what I'm gonna do is just add a very thin layer all the way around and stick that around the shake a bit. And then very carefully just work that around. It's got its shape to it anyway, so it kind of just falls into place. 
think so. Okay, and now I'm going to stick all of my bows down. So like I said, you get, well, you want to have 20 to go over. That's if you want to do it that way. I have gone full on with it, but I do like it. So I've just got my hot glue on because I'm sticking onto that textured cardstock. I'm just going to put a tiny little bead behind each one. And I've also finished it already with a little embellishment. I've used these ones here. Just inexpensive ones. You can still get them in the range. They're really nice. Again, they're like iridescence. They just catch all the colours. So I'm just going to go and stick all these on. Okay, so they're all stuck down now. Look at that. So, so pretty. And then I'm just going to finish it with a bow. So I'm going to thread through... So I've already gone and done my heat embossing. I've done the two together. So this one just says Happy Easter. This is actually a woodware Easter stamp set. It was only a small, tiny little one. It's like two, two and a half inches by two and a half. And on it, you get this one and the Easter greetings. Um, and they're lovely. I got them last year after Easter. And because um, I found it was just something I was just lacking. It was just a nice, simple sentiment that just said, you know, Easter greetings, Happy Easter, things like that. It's always those basic ones that you... You, you know you need so I'm going to need a bit more ribbon than that for my bow I always end up wasting ribbon I'm terrible and I have a bow maker as well but I just can't be bothered to get it out so <laughs> it's like a lot of gadgets isn't it it's just quicker to just do it yourself sometimes anyway let's pull this through like so and then I'm going to just tie a nice bow I'm going to pop a little bit of glue on the back. I'll trim it all once it's stuck down because then I'll know how long I want the bits to be. So I'm just going to stick that like so. If this finishes it off as well. I just think it makes it look so cute. Really, really love it. So I'm going to cut this one about there and that one about there. And then I just need to cut a little bit off the bottom. So if you just open up your card, pop it on its side, line up the score line here with a line on your mat. Anyone, doesn't matter. Like so. And then I'm just going to grab a little ruler and a cutting knife. And you just want to take, make sure you stay nice and straight because you're working with an oval. And just take about one eighth of an inch off from the bottom. Like so. So no one will really notice it, but it will make a difference because they'll be able to display it. I mean, it, you can do it without, but it's it does wobble around a little bit. Whereas by just doing that, it will now open up and stand perfectly. So there you have it. There are my decorative Easter shaker cards, or Easter egg shaker cards, and I think they're absolutely adorable. Again, hopefully the photos will do it justice and you're picking it up well in this video because in person they look awesome. So yeah, looking forward to using these. I'm going to try some more brighter colours when I do the paper piecing and stuff. So that should be a nice video. So look out for that one. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed today. Please check out those links that I popped up throughout the video because again, if you're new to doing shaker cards or you just want a bit more inspiration, there's always lots of helpful you know, tips in those. But yeah, thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today and consider subscribing so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.